scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the Lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom I was teaching the school of ministry students and um, I taught them something that I think is, is, is good for us to know I said um, every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation in every dispensation there is a dimension of the dealings of god that he apportions for that generation to know about him and it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of god that he has apportioned for a people and to be able to accurately teach god's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me i am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of god the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah paul said i went up by revelation not by desire i went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is god's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of God to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when God is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of God displayed within a territory. The revelation of God that is seen in a territory is not all that God is. It is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided. He will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time. Are we together now? So God can step into a place like Zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal 
it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough and so we continue to press daily we press through knowledge we press through desire we take advantage of his grace and mercy it's like a ladder we keep climbing and we are being transformed we are being enlarged our capacities are we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring it becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being and they are not lying because divinity is swallowing you up gradually and you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit like you see someone manifesting under the anointing ordinarily you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed when you see someone manifesting unusual strength you know that that is another agency through him every time you align in the spirit you help to advance the purposes of god let me tell you something god is searching for men he still is searching for men never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches there are many programs happening it means that god is finding a people no alignment is not something that um is a costly exercise it's a costly sacrifice alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do because it will require pruning it will require death it will require discipline it will require commitment it will cost you your tears it will cost you your appetites but the end thereof is glory so the bible says that i reckon that the sufferings of this present time right romans 8 and verse 18 i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens he says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he gives you hope he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you when you watch a woman pregnant the constraints she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit she may have to go through all kinds of constraints but give her nine months in that condition the moment she gives birth to a child she becomes an object of celebration people come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman that's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting listen let me tell you something spending time in the presence of god has value in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of god that is a waste away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in god's presence you are busy people stay in god's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do most of the things we seek can only be found in his presence only be found in his presence 
it pays to wait and while we wait it pays to hear him because for every time he speaks he redeems your future for every time he speaks he grants you access to rise that ladder of power that ladder of grace hallelujah it says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge not just through your desire grace unction we want power we want to see the glory of god the effulgence of his person only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say i'm tired no you continue why because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together i want you to pray in one minute and cry and say lord i'm here again continue the training continue the dealing make me wiser make me better let me encounter another dimension of your anointing another dimension of your glory spirit of the living god i have come tonight to align myself the more this is the school of the spirit i have come make me powerful open my eyes activate my senses in the spirit place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate let me not pass as an ordinary person let a deposit of eternity be upon me mm. do something in my life that will cost me it will it will last me my lifetime i have come to eat of the bread of the spirit this is bethel the place where the spirit of god will grant you fresh manna fresh manna fresh manna he told the prophet eat for the journey is far you will need that mystery you will need that revelation the fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle you will need to be prepared the fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes you must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply that you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say he said jesus himself knew what to do hallelujah please sit down listen it is costly to start looking for answers when the trouble comes you see sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome you prepare for battle before battle you don't prepare for battle during battle are we together don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth and then you now run and try to find the mysteries that can be able to navigate another part and cause your wife to give birth don't wait until they drive you from work and then you now say what is the mystery of favor again no you are too late surround yourself with mysteries like chariots so that when the devil fires his arrow before it gets to you a revelation you have in store will arise the the shield listen that shield is a defense whether you are sleeping or awake you have a bad dream you are not even praying a scripture just fires from your dream realm he shall keep his angels charge over me don't react to things when they come are we together now yes don't wait until the day they tell you oh something happened and you are now panicking no god is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you someone comes and meets you and says we're in trouble and you say what happened rain washed our house you say glory be to god don't worry there is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint listen your confidence in life is based on 
the the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with fear is a product of ignorance you will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation this is the reason for fear you never fear anything you have control over ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives so we don't know whether we are going to live or die we say we don't know whether we'll be rich or poor we don't know whether we'll be successful or failures we don't know whether people will favor us or not god cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance and then tell you to not fear no the antidote to fear is knowledge knowledge so that when your uncle looks at you and says i can't help you again i'm sorry you know how you say uncle thank you thank you for what you have done so far because you have a mystery that every good and perfect gift comes from above it only comes through men not from men so if one man is not available heaven is still available and he can find another man that revelation alone settles you so you are not jumping around and saying, uncle what can we do that's a foolish and stupid way of speaking it's like going to a filling station all fuel comes from the ground not the filling station so if the filling station packs up we know that there's still fuel in nigeria all you need to do is look for another filling station are we together now may god grant us knowledge see the bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic it's not because you are young or old it's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman it's not because you are living in the north or south uh -uh. it's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence nobody is born with confidence it's a resultant effect of something joy is a product of something that you know fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know hallelujah please sit down i have such passion to see us grow in the spirit so we don't just deceive ourselves and say i'm a spiritual man a spiritual man is not is not something ambiguous there are exact standards that can measure spirituality spirituality is not something that one man hides in the pocket and say i am spiritual no there are clear spiritual standards if they have been met you are spiritual if they have not been met you are not spiritual it's as simple as that hallelujah that's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in week out because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here someone's life is dependent on what is shared here this is an issue of life and death it's not just an issue of a voluntary thing no it says they are alive to those who find them that means those who don't find them can die are we together now life is spiritual that's why the bible says everything listen it says everything that is done in the house of god must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness this is not my teaching but i just felt a need to do that everything in the house of god must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing otherwise it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow god's presence find expression if you are a cleaner in the house of god you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set you can't say i'm not a member of prayer department i'm just a keyboardist this thing this gentleman is playing is not just music if his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem the sound that will come out from there will obstruct what god is doing in your spirit he will be playing the same thing and wonder why it's not edifying you because he's playing his secret place amplifying it to people he's not playing music a gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual 
you will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such carnality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work but if it is not done spiritually the protocol people standing if they are just standing like employed people you see that's why you are a pastor here let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality nobody should serve in the house of god just because he's talented no your talent is inconsequential as far as your spirituality is concerned talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people so we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very very gifted people but all kinds of spiritual obstructions you see someone who hold a mic beautiful voice but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him you love the song but something about the voice there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying is responsible for that that's why we pray that's why we wait in his presence it's not just to increase skill it's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven and everything that is communicated to you even if it is something you have had before it comes with a fresh anointing it comes with a fresh atmosphere and it can cause transformation you are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of God no any church anybody that cannot host the presence of God in their meetings capture the presence of God is a cinema is a complete waste of time so everything must be done under the anointing we have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time be spiritual as an usher you are not just holding people under the anointing you are not just cleaning seats you are spiritual are we together now someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service not just your service the spirituality of it someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching my preaching not just the dispensing of gifts but the spirituality of it that's what can bring the transformation and bring the miracles I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves it's not so much about skill it's not so much about action but the the fire the passion the presence the glory that backs up what we do that's what produces the results tonight I want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer pay attention I'm going to share something with you that will bless your life the altar of prayer I want us to understand the mystery of altars Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, my altar is calling oh god my altar is calling oh god take my praise oh god take my praise hallelujah listen the body of Christ 
is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer when it comes to the issue of warfare when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations that's what I've been seeking to do to teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will every other entity needs a system of authorization are we together now altars most people do not know what altars are and for most people when you hear altar you just think oh it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way you you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars there is no great man who does not understand this whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing but let me tell you there is no man doing business in this kingdom or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in 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 ways that will shock you an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it i said an altar is a system of authorization and then an altar is a platform where on legal grounds the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm there are other illegal routes there are other illegitimate platforms but the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar because according to the law of territory a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happened on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said okay there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood 
so what is going on he said am i my brother's keeper i said ah don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happened even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar an altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance the potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery that's what an altar is it gives life to a covenant now write this down please altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions and altars can be people altars can be physical monuments like we had in the old testament they would erect stones altars can be institutions like the jerusalem temple that was built by solomon he said oh god if anybody faces this temple and prays hearken to that person's prayer not because of the rightness of the prayer but a covenant that was enacted there and an altar was raised to that effect the reason why salvation the covenant of salvation can work is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth in heaven the book of hebrews tells us that jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar that is still speaking today that is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the lord whether in you are sleeping whether you are awake it kicks that reality you will be saved because there is an altar that eternally secures that there are many platforms that god has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something god is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room 
is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order an altar anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victory is dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils will fly around and say no 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 you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer In James chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us James chapter 5 verse 16 I want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray James 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then it says the effectual prayer of a righteous man it says availed much availed much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, 
are we together now a son in the flesh now a, a generation now was passing that place and the night time came and he felt look let me just lie down and sleep and the bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep he didn't pray for an encounter he didn't beg for an encounter the moment he slept the bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening the angels ascending descending it was like a, a portal a ladder and at the top of it was god himself and he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven i saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this is because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not jacob slept there you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason cross across that place and something happens to you all of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared you didn't pray now you are wondering what happened now you don't know it was jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing the same way elijah when he was about to leave he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically he went beyond the jordan and he said elisha asked i'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he, they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand here today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um, in the campus there somewhere they call long tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home sale because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it 
open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of God with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if I practice obedience consistently I have yielded my members to obedience I become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if I steal this handkerchief watch this if I steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if I do it again and I do it again that I don't know I'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men will say I'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if I begin to pray I may not feel comfortable but as I'm praying I'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me supernaturally are you learning something because you see not all altars were consciously built but they are still altars so it is when I say altars that are destroying you it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say if you don't tell us what you have done we will beat you no he may be innocent this is where the prophetic ministry must be guided because every time we talk of altar they think it must be traceable to a real experience no the mysteries that you do consistently are building altars and they eventually become invitations for spirits whether the spirit of God or any kind of demon spirit have you had an experience I'm not saying you should do it but you've seen it in ministries where somebody can come no church service just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll maybe for a child and go back and have triplets now question was anybody preaching but because the the power and the presence of God has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back to say no a young man came around Samuel and stood naked prophesy morning till night that's an altar when Saul went and met Samuel they were looking for the donkey as soon as they saw Samuel they knew their lives were going to be altered I told you altars are not just physical monuments you can be an altar and that's one of the things that prayer does you don't build a monument your life becomes the activation of several listen the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence listen you have become an altar spiritual activities can be happening around you so that as a living altar I activate possibilities just by walking you come around me and something happens to you I didn't directly pray for you you didn't even know you had that problem but an atmosphere that I was carrying implicated you why is prayer important why do we have to build an altar of prayer 
three reasons very quickly number one prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the Bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of God's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship Luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at Matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 it's actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God but he went to spend time all night communing communing give us Matthew Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 then come at Jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while I go and pray yonder and let's watch what the Bible calls prayer and he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men it's an authorized system of communion it's your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession for the saints why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand it's a system it's not about proximity it's a system of communion and communication if you are not a man of prayer you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um, I'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear God is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him 
I was counseling a couple some I think I don't know if it was last week and um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and I said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep or not don't assume you are his sheep assumption is costly in the school of intimacy you must verify that there is contact between you and God there are pastors that don't pray so they get angry they think the manifestation of the power of God is magic there are dimensions impartation will not give you you must dig your well by yourself you must create an altar a system you must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit you must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act is is like a tailor-made system of god reaching you god must know how to reach you on serious informations god must know how to reach you on trivial informations he must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit that place of training is the secret place i will never trade anything for my time with him that's where men are built that's where there is an exchange see let me tell you holding a mic and teaching is not difficult holding a mic and preaching is not difficult but communicating life that one is a derivative of your altar that's why we sleep in church that's why our churches are full of dry bones from the preacher to those listening all dry bones people stand and talk they say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you because there's no altar they are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit number two quickly why do we need the altar of prayer prayer creates a legal platform for God prayer creates a legal platform for God angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access prayer creates a legal platform mark the word legal it has to be legal the realm of the spirit is a legal realm the dealings of God with men are on legal grounds that's why God could not just pronounce men justified the system had to be followed to the latter prayer creates a legal platform for God angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men whichever you want to write a platform for entrance legally I know that many of you are surprised why should God Almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm he limited himself in the creation of man let me show you two scriptures that I think will bless you Psalms 115 verse 16 it's a popular scripture in the body of Christ Psalms 115 and verse 16 then give us Ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31 Psalms 115 verse 116 can we read it together one to read the heaven even the heavens other versions say the heaven of heavens are the lords read on but the earth as a territory has he given to where watch this let me give you a little explanation if if a jimmy has a house are we together and he decides to rent that house to me now it is true that it is still his house 
but does he have a right to just enter anytime again no even if he comes to that house although it is your house but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you so even as the landlord you will still knock and i have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy and you will still go so god is still the lord of all creation but he carved out a domain of his kingdom apportioned it to man and it became scripturally incorrect for god to come to the earth without a man permitting him that's why the holy spirit had to move michael gabriel to come and ask for permission from mary before jesus entered her womb mary could not just see her womb no 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 it was a discussion this is what we want to do can your womb be available the word was the permission be it unto me i authorize you how shall these things be don't worry about the dynamics your womb will just don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding be it unto me and he had to go to joseph and say joseph you are about to see something strange in your wife now i know that is going to shock you but please 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 don't drive her there is a mystery she's carrying and joseph calm down look at how god had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission permission one by one while he was doing that he was breathing upon anna the prophetess to keep praying breathing on simeon in the temple to keep praying john the baptist who will baptize and ordain jesus his father wanted to play with redemption he thought he was just playing with a sacrifice an angel appears to him and says mr man your wife is going to have a child the name is john and he, met, he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said no 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 this guy would disallow us shut his mouth he's a priest meaning he, there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office shut his mouth so that he will not say anything because words are padlocks and are keys it can disallow and allow realities so he said shut his mouth this this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing and they shut his mouth not as wickedness as a strategy to make sure john arrives so that jesus will be commissioned when john was born they said what shall we name him the wife said john they said no we've not had this name then they went to the dumb father now mr man what was the last thing when you spoke with the angel what did you hear and he wrote on the book john is that a prayer and his mouth opened god said now you can say anything you want to say you have authorized heaven now watch this look how hard it is for god to find expression in the earth he must go around that's why i taught you about the gift of men god cannot be the author of death knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him for 430 years god was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer not if he promised abraham captivity for 400 years but even god became limited for 30 extra years until moses was trained are you blessed john the baptist found himself in the wilderness the requirement to ordain jesus he ate locusts and wild honey had sheep camel you know clothes and all of that and he came out and started baptizing baptized jesus christ and that was all and jesus began his ministry listen every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life it is not that god is limited it is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized god can do nothing about it the heaven of heavens belong to the lord the earth has he given to the sons of men elijah knew this that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men and he didn't go to beg god he went and said i lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens so i lock it up and i put the key in my pocket listen to what he said there would not be rain except at my word but the bible james apostle james had a revelation of what he did he said don't think he just spoke grammar he went and locked himself and 
prayed earnestly he was a man of like passion but he allowed God Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 please quickly many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role we have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance and i search for a man among them listen who is talking here god to his prophet why will god be looking for men with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today i sought for a man among them that should make up what a hedge a gap they have violated something they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness i'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but i'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that i want satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty and god keeps watching it ravage you for decades and god is saying i'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise i was until i learned this i was surprised how god would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah, ah, but god can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me matthew 6 he was teaching them the beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as i hear you say before my ears so will i do please leave it there i sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for what not just for an individual for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so let's see what would happen in 31 pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even pharaoh and his army slain by the sword said the lord ezekiel 22 you're giving us a wrong scripture here that's what i gave you right ezekiel 22 30 31 please correct it and let's have it quickly media are we there please help help whoever is working we need some level of accuracy the scripture i'm looking for the scripture that therefore have i poured out that is what we just read therefore have i poured out my word indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have i recompensed upon their heads in other words it looks like i'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh god my name is john we are still dying and god is saying don't look at me as a wicked person i while i'm i'm pathetic there is a legal system authorizing this operation and somebody must arise and become a alt an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen God is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening. There are manipulations that are sending strange incense and we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist and they are helping to destroy the world. But you must find a people. That's why men are a serious business to God. Many of us act unassisted. Many pastors act unassisted. The realm of the spirit is available to assist. But until we call. Until we call.
pray in tongues for one minute and say lord i call you i call you into my life and into my situation i don't assume you are aware I authorize you. Shabras kataba segete kalabarusa sibriasha. Mande kres kataba kashabras kidabaliata. Lord, if you don't step in, something will go wrong in my life. My family is in trouble. For thirty years, nobody has risen in my lineage. Something is wrong. Shabras ketali karosa sibriata kata. Every year someone is dying. Yet there are prophetic words over my family. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabras katako sibaria sakatoba shiba. Ten graduates. No one is employed. Ten ladies. No one married. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto sobakai. Lekete kota sabres katoshi paratia. Everyone in my family fails when a miracle is about to come. Another mystery kicks in. Everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock. It happened to my grandmother. It happened to my mother. Now the devil wants it to happen to me. Shakato soto pes kalabaratosia. Embre toka dosi dekele kasosia. hallelujah please sit down listen let me tell you i studied my life i studied my lineage i studied my family and i saw things that i knew were not funny i knew that those things were activations and if i were to answer the call of god upon my life and prevail something must happen An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes, when you need a higher anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduates, my mother graduates, 10 of us in our family graduate nothing is working it will continue like that because there is something making god look like a wicked person i sought for a man in your family it's not that he cannot convert everybody to become a christian i sought for a man who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders wanting to deliver the nation of israel from egypt imagine how the heart of god bled when he saw the soldiers of pharaoh weeping god's covenant people man who is the man that i will send in ezekiel 37 ezekiel stood before the dry bones i thought god would say bones come back to life he said ezekiel you know this law of territory i can't speak and it will just happen so i will tell you i will speak from heaven to you then you speak now in the earth I prophesied as I was commanded when God spoke the bone did not move when he prophesied as he commanded all of a sudden there was a sound oh God spoke to me in a vision as I had that dream and God said it's over and you get up and just smile you are joking it will never be over it was over in the realm of the spirit what you do with that encounter is to stand up put that word and say I legislate I agree with you lord my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement that's why we have many dreams that never come to pass you see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit you see zero in the physical you see a job in the realm of the spirit you see demotion in the physical god told you his intention in the realm of the spirit your carelessness aborted it in the physical
take seriously what I'm saying. The same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family and you get up and just keep quiet. And then the day something devastating happens, you say, hey, I saw this thing. That's a pain in the heart of God because he, he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit, searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness. When God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets, they were angry. Read your Bible. They say, God hid this thing from me. Number three. What is the third? Purpose of the altar of prayer. The altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion. God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance. God gave man dominion over creation. It will take man exercising it. And prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion. The Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet. So although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God, but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense. Because before your arrival, another altar had been raised. And so it will take you enforcing dominion. I may come from this family, but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened. No. No. The same way someone is born of a millionaire and all of a sudden the child starts enjoying the benefits even before being aware that is the implication are we together now a woman may be for instance um, having a particular biological disease maybe a hepatitis or something and give birth to an innocent child and they say that child also has hepatitis did the child ask for it? No. Genetic conditioning. It's the same way. What stopped your father? Stopped your mother? You laughed at them and quarreled them. He's still waiting for you. Because until it is destroyed. Listen, let me tell you something about altars. For as long as an altar is said, it's alive. The covenant will keep working. That's the concept of priesthood. Priesthood is a system to keep altars alive so that covenants will remain in force so that certain dimensions will continue to operate. There are many things that will not obey you until you force them to. There are many things in your life. Your destiny will not open up just because you think you should have a good life. That's a joke. It's a costly joke. You will not get a job just because you got first class. You will not be promoted just because you think you are due. Nothing is fair in this life. Everything that happens to you is what you force to happen through knowledge. Apostle life is so unfair to us in the family. I sympathize with you but this is the wickedness in the world that we live in. Listen. If you want to take your portion in this life, you are going to take it by enforcing compliance. Your church will not grow just because you think you are a nice pastor. Being nice is not the seed for results. The ability to exercise dominion. Are we together? It takes prayer there are many people who don't pray they just get up and please come you just see someone and and he say pastor pray for me and your ego is on the line and you know that you have not sustained power with God no altar of prayer and you just believe you just lay your hand and you lay your hands in the name of Jesus the Bible says yes it said yes the Bible said but it takes your life to activate that reality 
the bible says they shall lay hands on the sick god said it i believe it it settles it you are a joker you are a big joker no it doesn't settle it no it doesn't settle it there is a dynamic to manifestation let's not mock ourselves and you try to pray for this person and all of a sudden number one he's not healed number two it backfires on you are we together now all of a sudden you find out that the same thing you try to pray for him for the tragedies and calamities in his life you brought yourself through ignorance and the whole thing backfired on you we are walking in an environment that is surrounded with altars they give you a job and you enter the company you are not the ceo you are walking there you don't know what spiritual backings have been invoked over that environment until you create your own climate you will be a victim of the default climate there are people who fraternize with the devil i will employ people to work for me but they will never rise above me so if the man goes down everybody will go down to still keep him above them because it's a covenant now you got a job fresh from the university your blood is hot everybody dances around church you carry your certificate and all of a sudden you are earning three hundred thousand but you cannot bring out ten thousand you are not a drunkard you don't pursue women you don't know what happened and all that swallows up that thing that's what i'm telling you what has happened to many of our parents so we think the solution is promotion oh god promote me then your salary is now four hundred thousand. the effect is still the same but a woman who went to a man of god and is joining a little prayer group in her ignorance is flying akara somewhere in the junction and with that akara she trains seven children in school it's not akara she was assisted by the realm of the spirit no sir you don't train children with with frying akara there you can come and meet that woman and beg her for a loan of hundred thousand and she will laugh she'll say i'm coming she will enter the room and bring it out yet you claim that you are doing a white collar job and the altar fights you listen please pay attention to what i'm telling you whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit an altar prevailed believe what i'm telling you zaria has an altar the effects of the altar in zaria is predictable you see it in the civilization of the people you see it in what happens to people the marginalizations that people never rise to certain dimensions you came to zaria and just thought it's all about going to church no you create your climate you create your climate that's why i said yeah though i walk Though I walk through a valley that has the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I carry another climate. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So you are in a place where people cannot live up to 40 years. You know, you are aware in your village, you've seen people dying like chickens, but you come with another order. You understand that the altar of prayer is also an altar that can contend with everything. And you are enjoying long life you are enjoying grace the person who married earliest in your family was 45 are we together and you look and you say no you get married then you must spend five or ten years to have your first child if you sit down and keep watching it and don't cry for assistance and don't force compliance it will never work I watch people and my heart bleeds at their perception of God which is based on their consistent sufferings they conclude that God is not a merciful God but he said I sought for a man that through the altar of prayer you can nullify certain activities legal ordinances that have been erected to speak you will be dreaming to believe there's nothing speaking against you now no sir you have lived too long to have created one by mistake you have lived too long on earth 
if you are up to one years old welcome to the reality of this life there has to be something speaking the bible says the sin of disobedience is like what witchcraft witchcraft what is the operation of witchcraft so we all want to rise it's a year of triumph and there is you think that the whole thing is your grandfather or grandmother and the day you hear that they are dead you rejoice the priesthood died but the altar is still alive you see that and the altar is fine and good doing well that's why you find out the solution is not just to kill people around the solution is through spiritual intelligence to lift up a spiritual fortification that vetoes everything brothers and sisters you will leave heaven on earth all of a sudden they will watch you ah, you've been in zamfara for three years but you are returning as if you're in the uk you can fly to uk with that altar it will wait for you at Heathrow airport as soon as you are landing you enter and all the doors close people who never knew you are still manipulated by that altar to work against you and you thought it's just something in nigeria and at the end of it you come back after five years looking like a thief where have you been uk are you sure yes why are you like this you know the way life is people smuggle their way and pass through rivers and deserts all to go to germany and uk whereas they think that's the greener pasture the greener pasture is the altar you raise that speak that speak that speak until jesus came there was a universal altar speaking against man vengeance vengeance but when jesus came he established another altar that spoke better promises better things i cannot live walking and living my life to chance and hoping that things will be all right i know things will not be all right if they will be all right you must create it you must create it so i enforce compliance will the devil leave you because he thinks god anointed you no no satan is not that cheap you are going to contend that's why he said put on the whole armor put on the whole armor there is a devil somewhere that will destroy your life destroy your ministry destroy your business destroy your destiny you get married to a very lovely wife you loved her with all your heart they ask both of you will you love yourself you say yes the moment you married everybody brought their altars in holy matrimony now you are nice people this altar was designed to scatter the finances of whoever is standing with you and all of a sudden a good woman but you find out that your entire life starts going down and if you meet a a prophet who is not sound in scripture he will tell you your wife is the reason for your failure based on prophetic insight he has seen that there is an altar associated with her it's not a lie that is responsible for that downfall the individual may be the nicest person in the world but the altar will not change please hear what i'm teaching you and there are men no matter what happens if they marry maximum three years the wife must die and all of a sudden from the day the dear lady got married he may be a pastor apostle prophet how many men of god have altars fighting them they look around and they claim nothing is happening and they assume that because they took on the call for ministry god is too generous to allow them it's a joke no sir and this man gets married to this dear lady and all of a sudden she starts sleeping mysterious sicknesses she never had heart palpitations she will feel being pressed and she says my husband i don't know what is wrong i'm at, since we got married i said are you trying to say i'm a witch look at what the altars are causing then two of them go for counseling and they meet a man of god who is sincere but no spiritual intelligence and he says look it's how marriages are just take it easy pray together and it doesn't mean what he's saying and they say okay they say hug your wife in front of me 
they now hug themselves hold my hand darling they go back home the altar say welcome back by evening that man has slapped her again remember he promised in the presence of the pastor not to do it again but the altars brothers and sisters that's why god puts meetings like this because you can be sitting down now not knowing the deliverance that is happening you just feel something left me i don't know what happened and you go back and you who would have you would have blown somebody out of anger you find out that that force that comes upon you when you are angry that can make you insult anybody is no longer there because there is an altar this ministry you see is an altar we don't have an altar this is it's, a, it's an altar that's why you can talk against it in your secret place and start going down nobody is aware because the altar speaks all of a sudden a man of God will teach them how to raise altars and they will raise an altar of prayer and come and say look we are not bad people the devil is confusing us here you are a good woman I'm a good person we did not negotiate where to come from and all of a sudden day one Shekato Praskataya now watch what is happening they are holding their hands and praying after that day they just feel good but nothing really happens I told you consistency is how spirits are attracted day two the, the man doesn't want to pray but she says honey remember we're on a project here you know what we, are, we have left at home let's do this thing after one week two weeks somebody starts having a dream somewhere after one week a spirit must appear to somebody somewhere and try to warn somebody an effect is being created in the realm of the spirit it's not a sign of witness you can't sit upon hot fire and act as if it's not it can't be for too long listen to me that's what is happening to some of you now it was after your seven days of prayer you had a strange dream you have never had you thought it's a sign that you are losing it's a sign of victory something is happening in the realm of the spirit all of a sudden you went to sleep and you saw a vision of your mother when she was young your father when he was young the spirit of god is trying to show you something follow him but that's when the spirit of slumber comes god keeps saying for one month wake up by two o'clock there's something i'm doing in your life after two weeks you don't wake up again you see how we cheat ourselves and you don't know that you are on the path of deliverance you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign hello him I promise you if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight many of you as soon as you go back you will see the dream you will have this night the devil hates what you are hearing because this is the age-long mystery that has kept people in your family educated but it's like they are not educated a pastor you are blessing people but you never rise yourself do you know why because your victory is tied to your altar not just your service your altar I created an altar that is independent of koinonia and I said no devil will come and destroy me no no watch this please come again the two weeks we are praying Shabra Kato Sotobash Lebre Koto Shabaya we are praying we are praying we are fasting something starts happening one day there will be a breaking point in the realm of the spirit if that prayer were two hours a day will come it will become a vigil not by not because you like it there will be you will break open a portal in the realm of the spirit and two hours prayer will become prayer till morning and your child will come and meet you and say daddy i saw a man in white and i saw the man doing something on your head spiritual activities are happening in the family all of a sudden you start seeing doors opening you love your wife like never before the devil told you the secret is to marry another one no sir you marry another one the altar is still the same 
there are pastors the altars that fight them anniversaries of their ministry something happens people start living they have raised so many people but have not been raised by themselves there are altars i've seen it fight people i've seen it fight people i know these altars fought me for years you go to sleep a strange woman appears to you and sleeps with you in the dream you get up and say sorry i don't know what is happening someone is about to marry you here comes a stranger again what is bringing the stranger have you ever asked you relocate to another house he still looks for you and comes they are about to promote you in the office all of a sudden your physical document disappears physical document how many students seated here that's the mystery behind the results you are seeing the ugly results that you are seeing you love god and you are sincere but that's the mystery behind the demonic things you see on that board you are not that dull you write your exams and go back the altars continue writing things continue writing things i know what i'm saying listen to me you hear people coming here with four points they were not born that way they have tapped into a higher covenant you see them surprised by their own results they know it's not their efforts that's why people join certain ministries join certain men of god see people partner with certain anointings this is the mystery of partnership when you partner with an anointing you access the covenant the covenant not the promise the covenant there are parents today the moment you are 50 years arthritis you get up one morning father cannot walk mother cannot walk their entire pension is spent on it it's not sickness it's a programming an altar is accurate with digital precision regardless of your foreknowledge it will work it will work I have seen it destroy families I have seen it destroy ministries that's why certain ministries remain small no matter how anointed they are an anointed man with fire on his head but he will not cross certain boundaries once they reach 200 something must happen a wrong news will spread around a scandal must come whether it's true or not have you not seen students their last and final exams they will go and the spirit will start moving them carry something to the exam hall they don't want to but it's an altar you are too weak to fight it you will promise that you will not take it and you take it as soon as you are sitting they just catch you and they said your entire six seven years cancelled brothers and sisters it's an altar there are families that as a family they are victims of abuse everybody mother father brothers all the daughters will eventually meet a man of god somewhere and all the man of god will do is to destroy them it will happen they are scattered in every place but their experiences are the same you will see them and like them but at the end of it you must leave them with pain they think is that the ministry is bad but the issue is the altar there are altars you give birth to men they must die they must die something must kill them no matter how healthy they are they must die brothers and sisters i have seen this evil it exists tonight we are going to pray are we together when it's time i'm not going to give you a prayer point when it's time to pray we are going to pray tonight you are going to erect many of you as you pray tonight you will see what will begin to happen to you i want us to lift up a fire in this place tonight and say lord this demon that molests me in my sleep i can't be pretending that it's not there again these animals that come to me in my sleep no 
I started a business well. Why is it that I start good things? Something evil must come. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I stand on behalf of myself and my family. And I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny. I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Shabra takata. Shabra toko sotobash. I tear it down. Altars of delay. Altars of barrenness. Altars of failure. Raka toko to bereketesh. Le berekoto sotobesh. Hallelujah. Please pair yourselves two two. Find find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Shabakato labakaria. Embretekas katafras kalabakuria dabash. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. 
every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight I invoke the blood let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access I have given any altar of darkness Shabras Kata Matele Kodosia even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I curse you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny because of where I'm coming from. I prophesy tonight. Your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray altars associated with territories associated with territories I come against you by the God of heaven I come against you pray pray I come against you Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. But it looked like it has not manifested. Because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny restored relationships restored finances restored mantles restored ministries Pray, pray. Let your prayer be heartfelt. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen. I don't care how many. Call it. Listen. You are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. I declare it. hallelujah many of you may not realize what is happening to you please i don't want you to idolize this teaching no it's not about religiosity it's about proper understanding and application so it's not just coming to lie down here no 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 the altar is a revelation we are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives listen because many of us here the only time you pray is when you are together with people satan started attacking you he gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life he will never attack it at once he can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace to pray I receive it right now lift your voice and begin to pray fire fresh fire on my altar fresh grace to pray fresh grace to fast fresh grace to intercede fresh grace for warfare i command every dead prayer life around my life come back to life come back to life hallelujah hallelujah one last prayer point and i'll pray for you there are many of us the spirit of god started revealing things to you because you were meeting with him every day but something happened no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life no access to illumination you used to be you used to have projects that you and god are on you can literally say we are on a faith project but now there's nothing like that your life has become stale and barren some of you is when you started ministry this this so-called thing called ministry that's what destroyed you we are going to pray a prayer of restoration and the fire will fall upon you i like you to pray say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say holy spirit i ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray 
let it not be that you're just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened Restore that intimacy. Restore that sweet fellowship that I once had with you. Fellowship that nothing in this world could be compared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I tell you there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies I pray for you now I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names everyone hearing me and standing here whether inside or outside you have prayed if there is any altar as i speak now that is speaking against your life at the count of three i command those altars to catch fire right now please get ready the power of god will come on people one two three i command those altars now be broken be broken be broken. Be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here failure it has nothing to do with academics it makes you fail in everything i stretch my hands may that fire anyone here who is a victim that altar is speaking i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i judge those altars now 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 by fire I judge those altars now. The love that can to shall lay upon those who don't brought out to see her take it up. Credegeti barakatus koduba shelende prakatusia. Inde bereto sudo bakatusia kata. Oh, I decree again in the realm of the spirit. Let God's people go. I prophesy an exodus over your life from every realm of captivity. I'm saying it by the spirit. I declare the power that will not let you go must let you go this night. Bring them out. The force that will not let you go. This is Koinonia. The force that will not let you go. I stand by the God of heaven. The God of Jeshuron. That rides upon the wings of the wind. I declare it must let you go now. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Ghost is ministering to me. There are people in business here. Every time good things are about to happen, there are forces, familiar spirits that stand to shut doors. I'm praying for business people. I stand by the unction of Jesus and I declare anyone here in business, whatever power has refused to let you advance, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, it comes under fire. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Release your destiny. Release your businesses. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
He says, say unto God, how terrible are thou in your ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves. The last prayer point and we'll sit down. Every long-standing infirmity in your body that will not let you go. Hear me. I don't care what it is called. Blood disease, genotype issues, recurrent things, eating your finances, destroying the destiny of your family. At the count of three, you will shout Jesus and there will be a miracle of healing right now. All kinds of spirits that are the back of mysterious infirmities. Are you ready now? At the count of three, shout that name that is above every other name. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be healed, be healed. Blood condition, be healed. Heart condition, be healed. Migraine, be healed. All kinds of bodily Let me pray one more prayer. Whoever is sitting on what is yours. Between now and the end of this month, I stand by the God of heaven and by the spirit of prophecy. Please hear what I'm saying. Again, I repeat, whoever is sitting, exchanging your destiny, by the God of heaven, I declare, my God will uproot them. My God will uproot them. My God will uproot them. For all of you in front here, I decree and declare, standing for yourselves and your families, the spirits behind the mysterious tragedies of your life, I speak as one sent. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Release their destinies now. They came to the house of God. Let them go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah. Who is this man? Come. What do you do, sir? So I was into business, but nothing is moving. You were into business. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is the house of God. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing snakes from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing all around you. The Bible, this is the house of God. If we cannot solve problems supernaturally, we are wasting our time here. Sir, I'm saying it to you in the open by prophecy. The same way you are standing here, this is the same way you will stand here. Your life will change in a way that will surprise you. I stretch my hand. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, let it open you to new dimensions. In the name of Jesus, every legal basis upon which the devil is oppressing you and your business, I come by the blood of Jesus and I declare it is over right now. Hallelujah. Who is Regina? Who is Regina? I'm hearing a name, Regina. You are wearing a yellow dress. Regina. Is there someone like that? Regina. Who is that? What's your name? Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jai here. From where? Jai. You believe in Jesus? Yes, Come. sir. Your family is about to experience a very strange miracle. Stand up. Listen, let me tell you this. Believe me when I tell you, people of God, there are people who are sent. There are people who are sent with an unction and sent with a grace. 
it is not the anointing that is available that blesses you it's the anointing sent to you can i pray for you in the name of jesus christ for you and for your family members right now every power that will not let you go here in the house of god i declare by the spirit of god a new chapter opens for your family now a new chapter opens for your family now hallelujah don't be embarrassed we'll sit down shortly but there's a re i will tell you why the lord directed that we fast today Emeka, you are a businessman. Where are you? Emeka, you are a businessman. You are a tall gentleman. Emeka, who is there? Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? Huh? Emeka, sir. What do you do? I do business, sir. Where? Here in Abuja. In Abuja. Yes, sir. Your doors have been closed, but the Lord wants to open those doors. Come. Let me tell you this. Look at me. It takes more than the ability to provide value and to provide solutions. In as much as that is the basis of your reward, there will have to be a prophetic dimension that gives acceleration to the works of your hands. Hallelujah. You believe in Jesus? Yes, sir. Father, I pray. You have brought this gentleman. You are a mecca. Come. What he says to one, he says to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Go and prosper. Now, I release the grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, my friend, I pray for you. God is the helper of men. I pray that you will enjoy his help. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. One last prayer. The Lord is ministering to me and he's showing me a family here you didn't come alone but this has been one two three four five miscarriages one two three four five please who is that person five miscarriages and the lord wants me to minister to that person and will go straight to the ministry of the word while that is happening there is a gentleman not a lady a gentleman the power of God will come upon him and you will shout under the anointing loud to the hearing of everybody. Please bring that gentleman out. My dear, look at me. You are the one. Is your husband here? Husband, where are you? Why did you leave your wife to come alone? The word is... Let's celebrate the husband as he comes to stand. Don't be ashamed. The Lord himself is visiting that family. My friend, under the anointing, the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Therefore, I speak to you. Everything that has stolen away your joy and your testimony as a family, I command it to let you go now. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray. Miscarriage, I want to pray. Don't worry, I'll pray for you. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. Something is coming on your wife. It's over now. Now, two of you. Over now. I'm seeing a spirit that is back of her miscarriage. I challenge you by the God of heaven. Let her go now. Let me pray for you. Father, I stretch my hands. Ah, I'm seeing fire leaving my hands and just coming on you. Everything that will not let you be fruitful is a command. Whatever will want you to disobey that command. I open up your wombs in the name of Jesus. And according to the time of life, I decree and declare, return with your miracle children. Regardless the medical report, we stand by the God of heaven and we declare oppression in the area of fruitfulness come to end now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ please return back rejoicing my God will surprise you it will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ One prayer while you're standing. Father, my portion for this night, if I receive it by faith, it will not elude me. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be tired of praying. We'll be seated shortly. My portion. God is a God of portions. Are you praying? hallelujah please be seated if you can god bless you tonight we're going to be brief in this place but i believe with my heart all my heart that the testimonies that will come out from tonight's meeting will truly bring glory to the name of jesus Pastor Israel, I'm seeing oil being poured on your head. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands. The grace for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. May that grace come upon you. Let it distinguish your ministry. In the name of Jesus. You will walk in tremendous dimensions of signs and wonders in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen malachi chapter 2 and verse 2 well seated i want us to take a minute or two to just thank the lord for his marvelous hand i cannot begin to tell you the great and awe-inspiring things that the Lord continues to do in and through our lives across the nations of the earth. Please give us that scripture, Malachi chapter 2 and verse 2. If ye will not hear and ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts. It says, I will even send a curse upon you and I will cause your blessings. Yea, I have caused them already because you will not lay it to heart. There is something about God's desire to be glorified. That when we experienced his, his manifest presence, his miracles, his signs and his wonders, we must be very intentional about giving him glory. Whilst you are seated in one minute, can you say thank you, Jesus? For that which you continue to do in my life, for that which you continue to do in this ministry, you have so lavishly honored this ministry within the time that we have been in this city you have shown yourself mighty and all across the globe salvations healings tremendous miracles transformation by the power of your word we lay it to heart to give you praise this is the lord's doing cannot be the doing of a man and we thank you we thank you don't be tired thank him for the numerous promotions advances in the spirit equipping you with sufficient spiritual knowledge and understanding helping you to stand strong preservation we thank you we thank you we lay it to heart to give you glory in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in micah chapter 4 when you begin to read from verse 1 the bible speaking through prophet micah he said 
in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the Bible says people or nations shall flow to it verse 2 is my point of interest it says many nations not a few many nations will come and say come let us go up to koinonia the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob the Bible says he will teach us his ways so the end time manifestation of the house of God is a place of light a place of spiritual illumination please listen carefully you have to make a covenant with yourself and your destiny that you are going to submit to the Word of God and place irreplaceable value on the Word of God it says I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified we must place premium on the Word of God it is God's instrument for transformation it is God's instrument for signs and wonders Habakkuk chapter 3 when you read from verse 3 and 4 verse 4 amplified says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of God is hidden in his light John chapter 1 and verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae chapter 1 and verse 9 Colossians 1 and verse 9 and he prayed bowing his knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that they be filled number one with the knowledge of his will number two that they be filled with all wisdom and then number three spiritual understanding there is no hope for the believer who does not contend for illumination illumination to the degree to which um you are able to drive away every darkness around your life you know when you get born again you are introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit the bible says and among the many things that the holy spirit does is to guide you into all truth are we together now and when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you he will guide you he will reveal to you the precepts the ways of god so every time we tabernacle week after week this is not just a convergence of christians honoring a spiritual activity it's more than that every opportunity that we have to be exposed to his power his grace our hearts must be intentional because it is the entrance of his word that gives light and then the bible declares that it gives understanding unto the simple your stamina and your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon spiritual illumination light Isaiah 33 says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time you have to know the ways of God the ways of God define the modus operandi of the kingdom God has a method God has how he lifts. God has how he restores. God has how he blesses. God has how he keeps the saints in victory. He says, now thanks be unto God, which causes us always to triumph. And so our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to expose the body of Christ and those who have been given and are planted under our spiritual um, jurisdiction to provide the requisite level of spiritual intelligence the requisite level of knowledge that number one helps you to know the Lord and then number two equips you with the keys it takes to walk in victory experientially are we together that means that after a while of exposing yourself to the truth of God's word you must come to a point where you are strengthened you are equipped equipped Ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 9 
down to 11 the Bible says it's for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers why for the equipping some versions say equipping others say maturing perfecting of the saints we have all kinds of professionals in our midst we have doctors we have business people we have politicians and, and so on and so forth you are not equipped by just giving every and any tool you are equipped by giving the tools that you will need to excel imagine with me for instance that a farmer goes to the farm and the equipment that you give him is a syringe it's an injection are we together now a bandage those are useful equipment but not for farming so the bible says in colossians chapter 3 from verse 16 it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly then it says in all wisdom the word of christ can dwell in you richly but not in wisdom the wisdom part is that you are equipped methodically you are equipped in a way and manner that supplies the spiritual arsenals um, such that you will not only have these truths but you know how to use them if and when occasions demand are we together the end of knowledge is to be able to solve problems to provide solutions with the information that you have any information that is not able to solve your problem is almost useless are we together so this is not an advocacy just to communicate random truth mm -mm. there is an intentional project to equip you with the requisite body of knowledge listen carefully please listen carefully when it has to do with the knowledge of god exploring the person of god it will take eternity we will never exhaust him even in heaven there is room to come up hither we will continue to know him as his glory unfolds but as far as our excelling in this kingdom is consigned please listen there is a finite body of spiritual information that we need you can handle the truth that makes for your victory here and now the narrative that the truths we need to excel in life are so many and infinite is not an accurate narrative you can understand the principles that make for speed for restoration for favor for increase just like a student continues to learn even after graduation but there is an exact body of truth that is responsible for awarding him a degree in a field and he can exhaust it and hold a degree as a testament that I have faithfully exhausted this body of light so our advocacy is to bring us to a point of accuracy spiritually that you know what keys are responsible for what outcomes this is the whole idea of victory you know i said it at the first service the inaugural service that many believers have truth it's like a house how many of you know that a house has many rooms and not all keys open every door is that true yeah if you are in that house and the only door that is opened is the door to your living room if what you need to do is just to relax that's fine but if you need to use the restroom and you do not have the key that opens the restroom you are in trouble if you need to go to the kitchen and you do not have the key that opens the kitchen you are in the house but you will still be frustrated so the bible says and i will give you the keys of the kingdom these keys control favor they control speed they control your prayer life week after week god begins to hand these keys to us so after a while of immersing yourself in this truth you stand surrounded by mysteries like chariots and you can take on life with confidence you are not shadow boxing you are not hoping listen the laws of the kingdom are so powerful they are protected by god's own jealousy are we together The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall the preacher go except he be sent? Except he be sent. So please do not take lightly and do not take casual every opportunity you have.
to learn the ways of God God is taking away from our lives the religiosity around information that cannot produce result I know something about prayer I know something about fasting I know something about night vigil I know something about communion I know something about the name of Jesus and we have little little um, dimensions of scattered spiritual truth that are not synergized to produce victory in our lives so our Christian experience becomes one that is full of fear because we do not know the the, the arsenals that were designed to command what level of victory there is a random pursuit listen the faith life can be an interesting adventure when you are equipped with knowledge you are no longer ignorant you know you know what it takes to bring favor you know what it takes to open closed doors the goal is never for a man of God to stand and become king of kings and lord of lords over your life uh -uh. the goal is that by the election of grace you are immersed under this atmosphere of knowledge and that you are equipped to the point where you now become a savior yourself on the strength of the truth that you know and you have result after result it now begins to strengthen your confidence you get to a point where you are no longer doubting you are not hoping does this work does this not work you know he said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded hallelujah are you blessed the saints are built in this kingdom through the communication of the word more specifically the exegesis of doctrine doctrine is the name given to the course content the course curriculum that builds the believer to a point of stature and maturity in the spirit so more than the miracles and the manifestations in as much as those things are very important but we must submit ourselves to the methodical approach of spiritual growth where we not only know the Lord but we understand his ways they are called the mysteries of the kingdom Jesus said I am the way I'm not only a person I am God's authorized method you can study Jesus the way as the pathway to victory please run away from that Christian narrative that continues to endorse and justify failure in your life provided you are knowing the Lord it downplays the place of excelling in life and makes it look like there is no need you believe that narrative no matter how well intentioned you will use your lifetime paying the price for it I am come he said John chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then he says I am come that he may have life that is a level then he says and then to have it more abundantly so there is life and there is abundant life life the peace that you have with God based on the impartation of eternal life more abundant life is eternal life in your spirit alongside a victorious life on earth that is abundant life I made up my mind years ago that I will never lead a people who excel in their spirit work prayer fellowship with God and then become failures in life and their lives become a reproach to the victory that was won when Jesus said it is finished he did not only mean the sin problem was finished he also meant dominion had been restored are we together now you have to believe the whole counsel of God many times some of these erroneous doctrines come out of a combination of pride and frustration pride because we do not open ourselves to learn more frustration because we exhaust the body of knowledge we know and so we are not able to command other levels of results in frustration we now build a theology around our failure to explain away the possibility of complete victory a believer can have complete victory you can love the Lord and grow in passion while your finances also grow while your influence grows while you enjoy longevity and have peace with your children this is abundant life are we together if it is true that the gospel and the kingdom life was designed 
to be useful to everyone then it means it must capture within itself the ability to solve every problem we find on earth I believe in the whole counsel of God and by the grace of God I will not fail to bring to us spiritual truth after spiritual truth my assignment is to labor with the spirit and in partnership with other vessels across the body of Christ to sieve and piece together the working knowledge of the word the spiritual principles that are assigned first for our knowledge of God in experience and then for our excelling in life and to serve it so passionately and diligently to whoever is interested that if and when you embrace these truths and you believe them and apply them you know many times we say one word from the Lord can change your life that's not exactly true one word from the Lord that is accurately taught understood and engaged with understanding that is the word that produces you read your Bible the Bible says that the sower came and sowed the word Satan himself came and uprooted the seed Satan is not afraid of the word he is afraid of the union of the word with the believer who understands it remember that his assignment his office in heaven was the light bearer he was a custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he's not afraid of the word what satan is afraid of is your understanding the word and your engaging it because the power of god is released at the instance of your understanding and applying not just receiving are we together praise the name of the lord so let me just use a few minutes to touch on a topic that I believe would help to accelerate our growth Psalm 65 verse 2 the mystery of prevailing prayer the mystery of prevailing prayer I want to teach you something about prayer to add to your spiritual arsenals that will command victory after victory in your life the Bible says oh thou that hearest prayer this immediately tells you not everybody can hear prayer oh thou that hearest prayer it says unto thee shall all flesh come this statement is both an acknowledgement and a recommendation the writer is recommending that among the many people who claim to be able to hear and answer prayer through my research I have found out that there is only a single individual who sustains the ability to hear prayer and my recommendation is all flesh if you really need your prayer answered there is one who hears prayer he says unto thee shall all flesh come the subject of prayer is a very interesting one because every religion regardless what they believe they believe in prayer as the medium of communicating with the divine almost every religion believe that there is a reality beyond the three-dimensional realm they have all kinds of propositions that have been strengthened by their experiences but altogether they believe that there is some force or some deity above and beyond the realm of science that can come into partnership with men here and now and produce dimensions of victory that is not given to ordinary men so the subject of prayer is not new across religions across all kinds of faith practices but then the challenge many times has been that believers become frustrated because after dissipating hours and energy in what we know and call to be prayer it looks to me and to many of us in our experience that the amount of energy even physical and emotional energy that is being exerted into this activity we call prayer doesn't seem commensurate to the results that follow are we in agreement so week in week out we have the house of God across this city across this nation filled with professing believers who are praying in some way many adding with fastings but when you compare the level of energy 
the level of zest and zeal and emotional strain that we go through in that activity we call prayer versus the result that comes from it it doesn't seem to add up and yet the bible tells us that god is love the bible tells us god is abba that he is more willing if he did not spare his son jesus he's more willing to give us all things are we together luke chapter 11 the disciples began to study the life and the ministry of jesus now until jesus came john the prophet who we call the baptist had his disciples some of them later became the disciples of jesus theologically speaking and they saw him pray they saw him do a lot of things and um he worship sessions and here's what he said he said when a spirit leaves a man jesus is teaching now when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through dry regions looking for a place of refuge why is that so there's no time to explain it to you you see god spirit beings have spirit bodies there is something called the law of territory you are only at ease in a territory when you are made up of the same material with that territory are we together now that means if you are in heaven you will never be at peace until you are made with the material of that atmosphere are we together now these disembodied spirits you see when they left their original estate you know what that means because angels and these spirit beings can translate into different states not just like men that were here always human now to perform certain assignments they would have to translate downgrade themselves to certain levels they did that in rebellion and when they tried to return back to their original estate they were hijacked so till today all these embodied spirits are in a state of restlessness because they are not in heaven and they are roaming around the earth and in the earth here they are violating a law of territory because they do not have a material body for their spirits to find rest are, are you understanding it now so constantly these embodied spirits are in a straight loitering across the length and the breadth of the earth and the way God created the human body is that there is a possibility of multiple spirits coexisting in the same body. It is not only one spirit that can coexist. One man had a legion. You remember in the Bible? That's to tell you how scarce accommodation is for these demons. That a legion can make do with one body to find rest. So don't play games with your body. That's to tell you bodies are serious real estate issues in the realm of the spirit oh yes when demons see bodies that are available they don't play games with it no a body has now prepared for me so when these spirits find expression in a body they find some level of rest they can occupy animals like they, they entered the swine is that true but the most comfortable body is the human body why because humans are the zenith of God's creation and their level of complexity can allow the demons to find expression the presence of will emotion and intellect can allow them to find expression they may not have that level of liberty with animals so there is a constant search for bodies but here's where i'm going the bible says when a demon leaves a human body it gets back into that state of restlessness are we together it goes around dry regions and not finding a place here's what the demons will say like the prodigal son the demon will say i will arise and go back and go back to my house the demon is still calling the place he left my house that means in his mind there is still a possibility of returning and then the bible says when it comes it will find that body swept it will find that body clean but it finds it empty and the demon is kind enough to invite other demons higher than itself to build fortification to return to that individual so that the latter part of that individual is worse than the beginning 
Herein lies the mystery behind people who get free momentarily and then it looks like their situations multiply because they did not know what to do with the house of God. My house shall be called the house of prayer. There are six reasons I've written here why all believers must pray. There are six reasons I've written here. We'll take that for tonight and pray. If you do not understand, um, do you know, do you know, please look up, do you know, the average believer prays largely to ease the guilt of looking like an unserious Christian. They are not really interested in the results. Subconsciously, there seems to, if you are a believer and you are living among other believers, you know, prayer has a way of intimidating you. Someone is praying seriously and that prayer is judging your own seriousness. You keep looking at yourself and in response to that sense of judgment, you find a way of conforming to that religious activity as an act of appeasal. You're not interested in the results. The reason is because most of our prayer is not motivated by understanding. We have not been taught what prayer does. And so we just do it because Jesus did it. We just do it because it makes us feel spiritual. But let me show you six biblical reasons why believers must pray. Ready? Number one, the first reason, and those of you who are following from your homes, from every nation please do well to write it down so that you can teach others too we need to mature the body by helping them understand what prayer does the first reason why we pray is that God commanded that we pray it is a command two scriptures Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 popular scripture I use it a lot when teaching especially around the subject of prayer this was a parable now, in his earth work, Jesus used a lot of parables. Why? Because his listeners were not spiritual people. They were not regenerated. Their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit had not been developed through the ministry of the word and prayer. So he had to employ parables to help them explain how the kingdom works. And he spake a parable to this end. The morale of the parable is that men, everybody say men. Men here doesn't just mean the male gender, men, humans, that humans ought always to pray and not to faint. So it's a command. The whole idea of the story is to bring us to a point where we understand the power and the excellency of prayer. The Bible says there was a city, verse 2. Luke 18 and verse 2. There was a city, in a city, a judge. May you never meet this kind of judge in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. My apologies to those who are, those of us who are judges and magistrates, I'm your friend. There was in a city a judge, look at the description of this kind of man. The Bible says, which feared not God. That means it's difficult for God to speak to him. Number two, he neither regarded man. You couldn't bribe him, you couldn't come and beg. What sort of a man is this? So this is scene one. And then scene two, the Bible says there was a widow. A widow is a, supposedly a defenseless woman. Her source of security and defense has been taken away from her. He's teaching you the power of prayer. And then the Bible says she came to him, that man. Avenge me of my adversary. Verse 4. The Bible says he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, my God, that means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation. If you pray with time, there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations. He says, though I fear not God. So the man is aware. He's aware of his condition. It's not just that the writer is telling lies. The man is aware. He's testifying here now that even though I do not fear God, nor regard man, verse 5, it says, yet because this widow troubled me. So there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances. 
I will avenge her, lest by her importunity, or the Bible says her continual coming, she weary or weaken me. This is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit. That no matter how weak and defenseless you are, if you can engage prayer consistently, that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances. Prayer is a command. Once you are a man, if you are an angel and you are a spirit, you don't need to pray. But provided you are wearing this material body, the Bible mandates that we pray. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. Second scripture for that point. Let's hurry up. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Thessalonica and he says, pray without ceasing. The word pray without ceasing does not mean pray from morning to night every day. You do that, you become an irresponsible man. You will not be able to fulfill other things. The idea here is be consistent. The power of prayer is not just in the activity, but the consistency. Pray without ceasing. Number two, why should we pray? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2, the Bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with God and fellowship with heaven. The Bible says in this case, speaking about praying in an unknown tongue, it says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now, there's no time to contrast this with what the Bible calls diverse kinds of tongues. There are two different experiences. When we come to the series on the Holy Spirit, then we touch the gifts of the Spirit. Then I will teach you this. The Bible um, creates a dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the prayer language that was given to all believers. This has been an age-long controversy in the body of Christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues. Like all the other nine gifts, um, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the Lord will call when you read all through the books of Acts every time the Holy Ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the Holy Spirit they began to speak whether it's Acts chapter 2, whether it's Acts chapter 6 to 8, whether it's Acts chapter 19. The most classic sign or the most classic defense of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in Acts chapter 19. Maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that. Verse 1, the Bible says, Paul haven't passed through the upper coast. The Bible says that... Um, he came to Ephesus and then he found certain disciples. Follow the discourse, verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were disciples. So you see, there was something about their teacher. Their teacher was not teaching them something. They said in our lecture, we've not received this. We don't even know that there's anything called the Holy Spirit. Surprise now, he said, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Now the lecture begins, verse 4. He said, John's baptism, verily, verily, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on Christ. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The miracle now. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. The Bible tells us their number, verse 7. The Bible says, and all the men were about 12 and they all received. So I just thought to bring this in. We have a separate series where we we'll deal with that. Praise the name of the Lord. But just for you to know that when we talk about the prayer language of tongues, we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues. Are we together? Fellowship with God. When you begin to pray in the spirit, it brings fellowship. 
in fact the Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with God, with God you fellowship with the spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from God into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship number three why does the Bible mandate that we pray prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 just two verses after what we just where we just read first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 the Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it edify it the word edify is an architectural term you build yourself you build capacity in the spirit remember the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength capacity is small so you build capacity in the spirit when you pray he that prays edifies himself Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer Luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 Luke chapter 9 the Bible says and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings he took Peter John and James and went up to the mountain to pray verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed watch transformation two things happen one the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering there is a dimension of beauty and glory you evolve it's like it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray I am telling you this works you can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself growth and transformation bring for me a weak believer timid completely ignorant but with the heart that is bent on prayer I show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later let one day become one week become one month become one year become three years become five years and I show you a sign and a wonder was it not Paul himself that says I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all are we together I hope God is blessing us say amen, amen. it's very important that we pray growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray now you see for many believers prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving not transformation the primary assignment of prayer I'll be teaching as as we proceed in the series the primary assignment of prayer believe me is not for breakthroughs for miracles etc no most of the breakthroughs that we need we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom remember the Bible says when you are praying pray that your kingdom come because when his kingdom comes there are many things you will not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of God's mercy correcting our ignorance so if you understand the kingdom and the ways of God your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth not just petitions because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph result after result in your life is that true God's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles signs and wonders they are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely but to we who are in the kingdom 
Miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit. Now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom. Growth and transformation. Show me a believer who engages in prayer. For many of us, our prayer is not systemic, it's not methodical, it's haphazard. If you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning, good for God and good for you that day, you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very, very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up, then you quickly catch up. You ask for forgiveness, you repent, and then you start again. Do you know that even in the secular, mastery is gained through consistency? Ask anybody who leads his field in the secular. You do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way. You have to invest your time, your energy, your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery. Consistency, growth and transformation. You must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer. You discipline yourself. You get up in the morning, this is the day the Lord has made. You are praying, Sheila Kapo, Siata. You understand edification. You begin to deposit prayer. I'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time. That means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you. Prayer is powerful. Yes, sir. Your prayer can be like an usher, like a protocol. You send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive. If for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead, you know what the woman's prayer did to that church? That's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly. It's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into. It's risky. Because the whole world lies in wickedness. Are we together? Let's hurry up, we have to pray. Jude 1, Jude has only one chapter, verse 20. The Bible again talks about prayer. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer builds up. There are many ways that prayer builds up. It builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. So when you begin to pray, what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated. You can know. Then you come into dimensions where people like Papa Hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit. Where you can know things. Even though your eyes may not see angels, but you can know they are here. And at first when you start in the school of prayer, it will look like you are lying. But the accuracy and the predictability of your results will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie. You will know, you will perceive danger. Prayer is powerful. It brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms. You are human yet you are spiritual. You can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities. Number four. The fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession. Yes, sir. Warfare and intercession. Ladies and gentlemen, demons are real. Spirits are real. Wickedness is real. The devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of God over our lives and all that concerns us. Meaning if you fold your hands and let him be, he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you. But there is a provision in our dealing with God where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of Christ. And through this mystery we call warfare and intercession, we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now. Warfare and intercession. 
is very powerful. James chapter 5 and verse 13. Apostle James now is teaching us. James 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, Is any among you afflicted, buffeted? Is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant? Is many among you seeing the handwriting of Satan over your children, your life, your career, your business? Don't explain it away using science or sociology. It says the moment you find affliction, the solution is let him pray. We do every other thing but prayer. We discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation. And yet we do not pray. Is any among you afflicted? He says, let him pray. For time's sake, we may not read on, but when you read down to 18, it uses Elijah. It personifies an individual called Elijah, that he was a man of like passions, but he took the tool of prayer and literally stopped rain physically, not a parable, over a territory. Let me tell you this. Elijah was not the only one who believed in the God of the Bible. And I'm sure there were people who said, God, don't mind him. We command rain to come. And yet rain did not come. Because a man had authority to prayer. And God respected his authority. Regardless what you were saying that day, you would keep talking. If Elijah did not speak, rain would not come. May God give us that kind of authority. That you can stand and speak over your family. And say, this year, you all rise and go to bed. It doesn't matter who is talking after you. He spoke too late. You have declared. Let all the enchantments and all the divination speak. Not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say, what are they saying now? No. Elijah's authority, when he declared it, he said, I know God. He went to bed. There were other prophets under the custody of Obadiah. I'm sure someone would have been annoyed and said, what an arrogant man. God, bring rain to show this man he's not the only one. And God said, no, he doesn't work like that. When you ascend in this spirit and you have authority, you will do wonders with it. He prayed for a space of three and a half years, there was no rain. And then to show you it was not luck, he went again and did the same thing and rain came. Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. It was on the strength of prayer in Acts chapter 12. When you read from verse 1 to 17. The Bible says Peter was bound. Hand and feet in chains. They were preparing to kill him. But the Bible says verse 5. That Peter was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing. That's Paul's encouragement now. Of the church unto God for him. Believe me when I tell you prayer is powerful. They began to engage the realm of the spirit. Suddenly the Bible tells us that an angel came. The angel was always available. Peter would have died without that angel coming. And yet the angel was available. Somewhere in this series we'll talk about the ministry of angels. Because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels. The Bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to see that the word of God is never called a lie in your life. That's the assignment of angels. They are enforcers. That means when there is nothing happening from your end, they keep loitering around. Did you know that one of the ways that Satan knows God is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the spirit. A prayerless believer does not have angelic activities. What are they doing? When Satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities, he was once there so he knows, uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing. They are coming in response. When Jacob slept in chapter 28 of Genesis, when he slept, the Bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending. The Bible never said they were coming to him. He only saw them walking. They were going to those who were calling their ministry. 
that was why he said the lord was here these angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me there's no record of any angel bringing anything to him yet they were ascending and descending angels can be in your compound they can be in your vicinity they can be in your office ascending and descending bringing testimonies for those who are praying do not make the mistake of jacob jacob said the lord was in this place i had a chance for my lifting i had a chance for my rising but but according to the law of the will it will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do i want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens angels don't come because you are a christian they come because there is a demand jesus kept speaking he sent prayer to his future after three days i will rise it was not an information after three days i will rise when it was the third day god said you had the prayer an angel came rolled the stone and sat on it let me tell you if jesus kept quiet and never said anything he would have been surprised what will happen after three days the body would not decay but you would not come out either let the redeemed of the lord say so believe what i'm teaching you is why many people do not rise they come under strong influence of angelic activities but they are silent do you not know that this is how the spirit of depression works the assignment of the spirit of depression is to use obstacles to reduce you to a point of silence balaam caused these people and balaam said i tried but there is the shout of the king in the midst of them these are the mysteries that give us power and dominion in this kingdom when you pray there are tools of warfare you don't fight you only activate the laws that make warfare to be a reality so what we call warfare is not you fighting what we call warfare is you authorizing the host of heaven angel armies my brothers and my sisters you do not one angel two angels use hailstone is it in your bible when an angel stones you will you be alive look at the bible these things were not parables they actually The angel appeared and told Joshua, Joshua removed his sword. Do you know why he removed his sword? Because God gave him a word. No man will be able to stand against you. So when the angel came, he said, who are you? And the angel had to answer because the word of God was in, on him. If that angel kept quiet, he would have been surprised. It was not the knife. Joshua said, God told me something. Who are you? And the angel had to say, no, 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 hold on. It is true believe what i'm telling you don't play with what god has told you you can take it to battle oh he told me that in 2021 i am victorious oh yes i believe it this is not some pentecostal jargon it is true please sit down what then is the basis of our confidence if this is not true Before Satan attacks you, let me tell you what happens. Satan is every other thing but a fool. Before he attacks you, he will research what you know and what you don't know. He will bring it together and build the strategy to attack you. He does not attack randomly. Satan examines. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about agreement? What do you know about prophetic connection? Oh, he doesn't know so much here. What do you know about giving? So he brings it. What strategy can we develop? What are the loopholes in his spiritual life? That becomes the basis for the strategy. Is why Satan is almost accurate when he strikes. Because he does not shadow box. He uses your knowledge and your ignorance. Puts them together and build the strategy for your attack.
if you are Satan, will you like me? Verse 5. Oh, number 5. Number 5. We have to finish. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is now the platform to make our requests, our requests, our petitions known. Oh no, let's, I made a mistake, that's, that's point six. Let's go to five. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. The fifth point, please correct it. Prayer is a strategy for living faith. When you want your faith to be alive and living. Luke 22, two verses quickly. Verse 30 and 32. Prop Luke 22. From verse 30 to 32. That he may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 31. And the Lord said, now watch this. Remember the first time Satan came to Jesus after the temptation in Matthew chapter 4? He came to him, it is written, it is written. Satan left for a season. The next time he would come, he did not come directly again. He came through Peter. Are we together now? And he used Peter's compassion to try to say something that would stop Jesus from going to the cross. And Jesus discerning, he said, mm -mm. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32, what was the remedy? But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when you are converted, anytime you see people doubting what God has said, suddenly on Sunday you were believing. But on Tuesday, it's like you're saying, look, this thing is like wisdom is profiting to the right. He said, use this same formula to convert them. Tell them an attack is happening. What suddenly happened that last week you are full of faith. But right now it looks like you are just saying, well, one day go better. The wise saying that the devil uses to deceive us. When your faith fails, your convictions begin to dwindle. The classic character of faith is found in Romans chapter 4 when you read. He uses Abraham and Sarah as a portrait that he wavered not at his faith through unbelief. He counted God faithful. When you pray in the spirit, it truly keeps your faith alive. Because how many of you have gone to a place of prayer, you went doubting and you kept praying and suddenly it's like a generator. All of a sudden, courage, you know that this is doable. You even ask God, forgive me for the kind of unbelief I used to come to pray. Now my heart is alive again. And then number six, and we'll wrap it up for tonight. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is a platform to make requests and petitions. Are you saying that for most believers, this is the only one we know? Requests and petitions. And yet, that is just number six. Mark 11 and verse 23 and 24. Mark 11, 23, 24. Jesus cursed the fig tree. The next day it was cursed and the disciples were surprised. And he used the opportunity to teach them something about faith. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith. The law is in verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, he says when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. It is in the place of prayer we receive and you can never have what you have not received. There are two different things. Receiving and having is different. Receiving is spiritual. Having is the manifestation. If you have not received it in the realm of the spirit, you will never have it physically. And that happens in the place of prayer. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. A platform to table our requests 
and our petitions the bible says be careful king james says careful but it's not an accurate translation the real translation there the root word there is anxiety be anxious he says for nothing right it says but in everything so there is nothing there is no aspect of your life but prayer cannot be involved in it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving here's the instruction let your request be made known don't assume god knows it it says make your request known king james says make your request known and how do you know god has answered that prayer verse 7 hallelujah and the peace of god if you have truly made your request known you can know that your request has reached heaven because suddenly the peace of god in a way that surpasses all understanding will keep the word keep there is garrison it will build a defense around your heart so that all the troubles that come and make your faith to vacillate the peace of god like a strong wall Hallelujah. Where's Dave? You sing that your song again. Just prepare. Very beautiful, powerful song. Praise the name of the Lord. As we prepare to wrap up. Final scripture for tonight. James 4 from verse 2 and 3. James 4. The Bible says, in fact, let's start from verse 1 to three james four it says from whence cometh wars and fighting oh dear i wish i had time to walk this apostle james is a very intelligent apostle he's tracing the root of many people's problems he's saying from whence comes wars and fighting among you do they not come because of disappointed expectations there are secret desires that you have you want to rise you want to be successful you want to make progress you want your ministry to blossom you want business to move forward and it is human it says that the lost that war in your members verse 2 it says ye lost that means you have even an ungodly desire and affinity and you have not you even go to the extent of killing all desiring to have and you cannot obtain you cause quarrel and fight and war, yet you have not. And the simple reason, not knowing that everyone can have a great destiny in Christ. Are you seeing what James is tracing now? James is tracing for us the root of bitterness and hatred among family members, maybe respectfully speaking, among ministers in our society, among politicians. He's saying, if you know what prayer can do, you will never envy anybody because everything you ever see, there is a way of getting it too. Another person's testimony is not why you are suffering. This is what James is trying to correct simply because you do not know how to ask look at the side effect of not being equipped with that level of knowledge and then verse 3 it says ye ask and you receive not because you ask and miss are you seeing now so he's not talking about prayerlessness he's talking about inaccuracy in understanding how to ask and receive that he may consume it upon your lusts petitions can be made listen god did not leave us in this kingdom defenseless this our world is a wicked world and if god were to leave us to ourselves defenseless we may not be able to rise only god knows the kind of attacks per day per season that come upon families that come upon men of god some of you are politicians if god opens your eyes to see the number of people who try to invoke spirits day and night that you go down there are families just because god is helping you you do not know how many people is fallacy to believe that everyone is clapping for you and yet the bible says cheer up find comfort you can still excel in this world because you are not alone heaven has a way of coming into partnership with you to make you invincible and to make your life a sign and a wonder that when all the stakes are down 
you are still standing in that family and they say by what means your grandfather could not stand and you tell them i learned that prayer is partnership with heaven i can draw strength i do not have i can draw wisdom i do not have let me wrap up tonight by teaching you something the highest proof of humility is prayer prayerlessness is not just sin it is pride when you do not pray it is proof that you are sufficient in yourself it, you, prayerlessness is a statement you are making to god that i have vetted you oh god and i have not found anything in you that i do not have i don't need you when we pray it is proof of humility it is an acknowledgement that we are limited in ourselves and we call for support and we call for help even the military when they go for war they have a system of asking for reinforcement when it looks like the battle is raging then they have a way of calling and the command releases more soldiers I have stood face to face with situations in my life that I knew that only prayer could come in many of you have stood face to face with situations legal situations political situations health situations when you stand before life's challenges and situations sometimes you may need to drop your intellect sometimes you may need to drop studies and call with all humility even jesus at the height of his pain at the cross he did not keep quiet eloi eloi lamak sabatanai father if you now turn your face from me then i know that i'm truly defenseless and the father turned it away because he was looking at man the lord is nigh them that call upon him listen to me you can use the instrument of prayer to bring god down to your life and he stands by you like a mighty terrible one you may be weak right now seated here listen to me some of you are in ministry and you are asking apostle where will i get church land where will i even get the money for it some of you are fathers already plunging into depression because the pandemic brought so much debt you are in a situation when you go to pray you just sit down and cry i bring you words of comfort god is not evil to leave you alone it is our pride that keeps driving the help of god away from us my bible says i will lift up my eyes onto the hills then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help i don't know about you but my help my assistance ah i may look weak oh warm jacob as weak as you are as defenseless as you are but let the jealousy of god be introduced to your life and you will watch your life rise in a way that will first surprise you the recipient of that kindness the hymn writer says how did he put it now he says oh what needless pain we bear he says all because we could not carry everything you know i thank god for the honor and the privilege that he's given me to work in miracle signs and wonders and sometimes when I have the opportunity to minister to people, I am almost tempted to ask them, why did you allow it to get this long? Did you not know that God is that mighty? Did you not know that God is able to lift? Why did you allow the issue of your house rents to go so bad? Why did you allow your health to deteriorate? Why didn't you run to God? The prodigal son kept being proud. No, I won't go to my father. I don't want shame and the more he stayed there doing bold face the more he kept going down until he became like one of the peaks but one day he came to himself he said how many hired servants that's the voice of humility you know many times we want to take credit for everything in our lives joshua selman is a doer and god says in this kingdom owners are rebels if you can step back and say lord you made me father over this family but the bills are killing me i step back and i allow abba to take his place 
this political office i am tired of the persecutions that come here and if i leave it to myself one day they will kill me for nothing someone can give you a cup of tea that is full of poison and i know you think you avoid it but you, your memory can fail you one day hunger and test will make you finish drinking it first but you can still find comfort it is not only when you avoid evil that you are free there are times that the fire has no power over you the three hebrew boys men who the fire had no power it is not only avoidance that brings victory there are times you can walk through the fire isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not he says i am with you i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine and then he says verse 2 when thou passest through water i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you it says when thou walkest through fire you shall not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon you business people hear me i know that many of you here are veterans of business i don't mean to insult your pedigree but you have done so much just with human connection why don't you resort with humility to invite divine assistance that in addition to this some of you are professionals in your place of work why don't you employ the hand of god i am very quick to step back and say lord if you leave me to myself how many things do i know don't leave me at the mercy of my ignorance i am learning slowly but the demands are faster than my rate of learning can you come and stand by me as a mighty terrible god bow your heads in prayer in one minute everyone we're praying we just have five minutes and we're done for tonight's service please be patient don't be distracted everyone all the overflows outside following online while speaking the holy ghost is speaking to you and telling you you need to lay aside that burden you are carrying loads jesus said my my yoke is easy this family burden will kill you for nothing sir this political burden may frustrate you to a point that it may injure you the demands on your business you are probably owing millions and billions in corporate debt it will take more than just finding solutions by the arm of flesh some of you are dealing with loved ones with terminal diseases some of you are in ministry you have exhausted all you know as far as church growth is concerned we were not left defenseless everyone talk to the lord your maker the bible says to come boldly before him it's time for us to walk in victory And you're not just praying this for yourself alone you are praying for others too because through you like the Vidam sang that God can flow through you to bless others everyone please pray we have just two minutes and we're done Ooh, are you praying quickly Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Someone is praying. Whatever you oh, I am well able. I am well able. I am not the weak believer Lord, under situations and circumstances. He stands by me as a mighty, terrible one. To change. You can change things through prayer. That family should not remain like that. That financial situation does not have to remain like that. Man of God, your strength is limited. You can outsource intelligence. You can outsource power from a dimension that is not human. Business people. Whatever you want 
pray, pray. Let the song inspire you while you pray. The power of prayer. Thy kingdom come. Visitations for my family. New levels in the spirit. Whoever you want to touch. Lord, you can touch. Through me. Whatever you want to bring, Lord, you can bring through me. Whatever you want to build, Lord, you can build through me. Whoever you want to lift. Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Prayer can change your husband, madam. I assure you, prayer can change your wife. Prayer can change your children. You may have taken them to rehab. Why don't you try the power of prayer? Call upon the God of heaven who is able to change we have one more minute someone talk to god about your job someone talk to god about your position talk to god about that which stops you from sleeping the keeper of israel the bible says he does not sleep nor slumber listen please look at me we're out of time we have to end for tonight but as always we are committed to the global harvest there are people that the lord brought here tonight many who are following from the us uk asia the caribbeans whilst under the influence of this word the spirit of the lord is speaking to you many of you you are here seated the balconies all of the overflows right down to the basement outside and the holy spirit is speaking to you that it's time to make it right with jesus such an honor to be used by him to save as we sing i'd like you to leave your seat very quickly there are others who are saying apostle standing here i'm hearing the word of the lord it's time for me to be a serious christian i'm tired of playing games with my destiny as i leave this song singing i want you to run and come stand here all of you who are at the overflows just you would just run to your projector screens and stand there those online you would connect by faith and pray the prayer whoever you want to stay Lord, you can say through me. Keep coming. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to live, Lord, you can live through me. Whoever you want. Lord, you can bless through me. I'm counting five. Run to Jesus. Don't sit back thinking, Apostle, I want to come, but I'm embarrassed. I want to come, but I'm not sure. I came with my family members. How do I come? Uh, I'm, I'm shy. No, this is not a funeral service. 
the greatest gift that you can be given is the gift of Jesus this is not religion this is not church this is an experience to start a journey with God that gives you peace with God that your children and your children's children will benefit from don't be so selfish that you sit back and allow those connected to you to suffer because you have refused to give up on your pride are you coming keep coming whoever you want to change lord you can change through me whoever you want to live lord you can live through me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears listen to me the call to jesus is not some altar call for weak people to come and stand it takes a lot of courage that you are standing here is proof that you are strong that you are standing here is proof that you are selfless because salvation is not just for you alone come to jesus our time is gone but come to jesus we're not playing religion here jesus is a big deal for your life after now and the excelling of your destiny here and now god bless you god bless you now look at me all of you who are standing here i salute you thank you so much for the courage some of you are crying i salute you for the courage to stand the bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away everybody who means business with god will must at a point in his life answer this call refusing this call is pride don't run away from an opportunity to come to jesus who else can help you i'm going to lead you to pray this prayer number of you are rededicating your lives some of you are making this decision for the first time it doesn't matter what category i'd like you to lift your right hand in surrender and total submission to jesus who is here in our midst more than joshua selman beyond him the christ of god is here and i'd like you to say after me say it sincerely acknowledging that jesus is here say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus I love you with all my heart those following online join the prayer tonight I have heard your word I declare that I am unable to help myself so I come to you the author and the finisher of my faith I receive forgiveness of sin I receive eternal life into my spirit i also receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness i declare that from today the power of sin the power of satan the power of the grave is broken over my life i begin a new journey with the lord jesus christ no condemnation no voice speaks against me I am a new person from today i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted jesus as always we present to you the ones you died for thank you for giving them the boldness and the courage by the spirit to publicly make this decision by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that you start a new journey with god I commend you all to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit and I pray that step after step he will build you to be signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ everything that stands against your liberty in Christ I come against it right now I declare that you walk free of every guilt and every condemnation the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your mind in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now look at me my dear brothers and sisters thank you for making this great decision there's someone waving 
the placard there, one of the counselors. Please, all of you, just follow them. Just a few minutes, they'll have your details, pray with you, and you'll be back to your seat. Please, let's celebrate them, everyone. Don't be tired, let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, just two things very quickly. I apologize. We have to, um, we have to wrap up, but let me have the honor and the privilege of acknowledging the head of service of the Federation and her family. Please, let's honor them. Madam, thank you. Can you just wave your hands to us, ma'am? Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. It's an honor. Thank you. We never take it for granted. And then, quite a surprise, my brother... Uh, I was preaching in the heat of the sermon. I just spotted him, a consultant gynecologist, all the way from Meduguri, Dr. Joseph Innocent. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated, sir. Thank you. Such an honor. And for every one of you, I love and honor you. We sincerely celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the last Sunday of this month, um, that would be our first miracle service here in Abuja. For, for those of you who have not tasted of what the miracle service looks like, you are welcome to experience something that you will not recover from in a lifetime. Please, when we invite people, it's not to increase the church of a man of God. It is proof of love that we know that there are people in need of the power, the glory, and the grace of God. And by the grace of God, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi will be with us. And it will be a wonderful time in the spirit. Praise the Lord. There are other guest artists coming up before him. But just to let you know that God is doing a great thing. Please do not come to church alone. Pay the price to come with as many. And for your loved ones who... Listen please. For your loved ones who are not domiciled in Abuja here and may not make it physically I'd like you to do well to inform them they can connect the online the media space has given us an opportunity there's no excuse as far as connecting to grow and to be built is concerned have you been blessed tonight the Lord bless you please rise up on your feet hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I declare over your life this week beginning is a week of victory for you in the mighty name of Jesus may your spiritual life receive such an acceleration this week your hunger and your passion for the things of the spirit will never go down and because you have believed I pray for you all through this week from Monday till Sunday experience the miraculous every day in the name of Jesus Christ every source of pain every source of stress i declare that it rolls out of your life like smoke before the wind in the name of jesus christ you will not have to tell people you came for koinonia the mark of grace upon your life and the testament of the hand of god will be evidence that you met with the king may the lord bless you may the lord increase you in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you next sunday Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, 
We believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.